Namaste, everyone. Welcome to another session of our Yoga Insights. Today's session is going to be hosted by Akanksha Damini Joshi. She is an award-winning filmmaker, meditation facilitator, and the co-founder of the Center of Embodied Knowledge. Her filmmaking oeuvre ranges from social and ecological conflicts to experiential insights on spiritual traditions. She pulls in multi-dimensional experiences from her filmmaking to design immersive meditation sessions like the one we're going to be attending this evening. She has also been facilitating thematic meditation retreats on diverse spiritual processes offered in India for over a decade. Um, so the thematic anchors for her meditations range from folk mystics like Dadu, Patlu, Sejobai to Kashmir Shaivism to Vedanta. She draws her inspiration from the philosophical basis of Natya Shastra, molding it with digital technology to create immersive experiences for contemporary seekers. So what is the connection between gratitude meditation and the Panchamaha Yagna? The five-fold method of gratitude is inspired by this ancient Mahayagna, tried and tested over centuries in India. We can still find these gratitude practices in our homes, our neighborhoods, our villages, perhaps in some places existing only as mechanical practices, minus emotional or intellectual understanding. Through this meditation, we bring a conscious bhava, emotional, creative, and intellectual understanding back to the process and redesign it to suit our modern urban lifestyles. So it's going to be a very, very special meditation. And Akanksha is also, she makes brilliant movies, which y'all can all refer to at the end of the session. We'll be sharing details on where to find those. But for now, I'd like to welcome Akanksha, please. Will you join us? Um, I think you're on mute. Namaskar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of Indica Yoga's Yoga Insights. And welcome to the Yoga Insights session. Um, I would also like all our participants to please uh, unmute your videos because this is an interactive session. So we'd love to see all of you and interact with you, please. Okay, I think we have very shy participants. <laughs> we'll know how to warm them up. <laughs> the shyness will eventually go away. <laughs> so yeah, please join us guys. You can unmute your video so we can all see you. There's still people entering the waiting room. So... Maybe we'll start and eventually they'll absolutely, answer the video. Absolutely. So to begin with, um, you know, why I request you to uh, keep your videos on is because meditation is always a collective process. It is not a one-way process. We are all meditating together and we have this opportunity to be together. So when I'm not seeing you, it's like I'm talking into the space I would very much like to see your faces and many people I can, I, I know uh, otherwise they are smiling and I can see you beautiful. It's lovely to see you all again and we can connect with each other. It's so rare uh, to find connections in satsangs like this. So I like to make the best of satsangs by seeing your faces, by feeling, sensing how you people are going and progressing in the meditation. Is it working for you? Do I need to tweak something? Do I need to change something? And I can only know that if I see you. <laughs> so it's like in a classroom with a teacher with all the students wearing a box around them. Imagine. <laughs> so you need to take off the boxes. So like I'm seeing you, uh, like you're seeing me, I can see you. So there's going to be a two-way process. That is why the request to please keep your videos on. Okay. So shall we begin, Sophia? Please, yes. Perfect. So yes, I am the co-host now. Perfect. Now I have the... <laughs> I have the tools with me to begin. And the first tool with which we are going to begin is going to be a little mood tool. <laughs> you know, it's very important to ground yourself, like I said, in this moment where we are together. 
So I just invite you to put a hand on your heart, just symbolically. Heart being symbolizing the center of our consciousness. And just to breathe in deeply. And when you breathe out, just open your mouth slightly. Very nice. You see, when you breathe out and release the breath deeply, there is also um, our autonomic nervous system. There's a little nerve there called the vagal nerve that really relaxes. It controls our heart, it, it controls our blood pressure, it controls what we call the stress in our body. And the minute we breathe out, it's like sighing. Ah, it really relaxes. And you can feel more comfortable with this little experiment which we are going to be doing in our inner laboratory. <laughs> yes, please. Just relax and feel in tune with this amazing set of people we don't know from where all we may not know their names we may not know what they're going through in their lives right now we may not know the histories which they have or the futures they are going to inhabit but what we certainly know is that this special moment in time whoever we be we're together in this little experiment that we'll be doing. So just make yourself comfortable. Allow yourself to feel easy in your chair or your cushion or wherever you're sitting. Ah. Because you're going to be coming back home. And coming back home has to be an exercise in deep relaxation. Not with big long faces as if you're going to go and achieve something. Na 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 na. Coming back home is always coming back. Ah, letting down your armors, letting down all the struggles in the world. And just coming back home, relaxing into the lap of existence. Because gratitude is only something that can be felt through relaxation, deep relaxation, deep nourishment of every cell of your being. So as you guys would have guessed, the language that you will encounter in this meditation session is going to be poetic <laughs> because I'm that sort of a person. <laughs> it comes naturally to me and also because poetry helps break certain barriers, stories help break certain barriers which perhaps facts and numbers can't do. So allow yourself to enter this poetic experience. I promise you, I have tried to do my best so far. And Ishwar Kripa, everything will go as is supposed to go. Good. Just relax yourself and check. Firstly, is your body here completely? Videos on, but is your body here? Do you need to rush for a cup of uh, water or anything? Mm -hmm. In case so, just make sure all that's is, that, that is done and dusted. And you're here totally and entirely. We need your presence here. We need your energetic, your spiritual presence here. Your intellectual sharpness also here. So, mentally, are you here? Turn off all the mobile notifications in this highly mobile mind. Whoosh, off. <laughs> all the mental mails, off. All the tabs which are popping up either on your tablets, your mobile screens or your uh, internet whatever browsers that you're using make sure everything is off and this may be a virtual medium but trust me from experience let me assure you it's possible to go in as deep as it is in a physical medium 
<laughs> as long as you are here totally otherwise though physically also if you're here nothing really happens if you're not present your totality is deeply invited and requested so please body here mind here and the third check very important bhavana emotionally are you present here because you know what is that the kind of meditations that i do and many people whose path is bhakti or love do <laughs> the ones who belong to the world of poetry of stories if the bhavana is not there it cannot happen <laughs> so the purity and the depth of your emotions are going to get you the results directly proportional so the deeper your emotional connection with this is the deeper and purer your emotional connection with this is the same proportion you will experience the meditation so do check what your emotional commitment to the meditation is and in case it's okay try kiya jai i'm just trying for the heck of it give it a shot na now that you're here give it a shot let's see what happens <laughs> all righty okay so tada <laughs> we're going to begin with the big bang now whether big bang is actually the beginning of the universe or not no one can really say many believe yes some believe no but what is certainly beyond belief is what you're going to see on your screen right now this right now me and you and you and you we are all traveling it doesn't seem so but this is the truth we are all traveling on a tiny planet in the solar system in a galaxy we call the milky way which is in a universe about which we only know see hear sense taste feel a tiny tiny bit right now me and you and you and you are traveling on this tiny planet you see here I invite you to right now bring into your awareness your feet. If you're sitting on a chair, touch your feet to the ground. Or if you're sitting on a cushion, feel your legs that are in connection with the earth. Your entire awareness right now on your legs, your hips your feet and now listen to these words let every cell of your body imbibe drink these words for whatever be these are true this moment you are sitting and traveling on this planet which is whirling in three ways mm -hmm. around its own axis it's whirling at a speed around the equator of around 
656 kilometers per hour. It is circling around the sun roughly at a speed of 107,826 kilometers per hour. <laughs> And as a part of the whole solar system, whirling around the center of our galaxy at a whooping speed of 220 kilometers per second. Get that. So if this is making your head whirl, the good news is, you're in sync with the earth, my friends. <laughs> so by the time our meditation is over, we would have whirled some 2,484 kilometers around ourselves, i.e. the earth. Some 161,739 kilometers around the sun. And 1,080,000 kilometers around the Milky Way. <laughs> so, welcome. Welcome to the ride. The ride of gratitude. Once upon a time, once upon an eternal time designed by our rishis the Panch Mahayajna gratitude for this incredibly mysterious life just flow along and allow see what happens there's little that's known what is known is sometimes very doubtful like you're thinking you're sitting but actually you're moving crazy <laughs> so allow and in the allowing I would like us to begin with a little game yeah those of you who are comfortable on the chat box you are invited to type in some things I'm just turning on my chat box and those of you who have got um, a sheet of paper can just write it here. Okay? Now what the game is going to be is going to be something like this. I'm going to say a word. Okay? And you have to come up with the first word or the first thing that comes to your mind. <laughs> when... I like this Mano Mohan Kamlesh. <laughs> you guys haven't seen him, but I couldn't. I'm just adding the spotlight. I quite like this. I'm very happy to meet you, Mohan Kamlesh. <laughs> Please type in and carry on with the game. So what you please do is you, the first word that comes to your mind, you please type that in your chat box. But there is a catch in this game. Okay. Now the rule is that you cannot push the enter button. Do not push the enter button. Just type it in and wait. Wait till I say one, two, three, go. The minute I say go, you press enter. Okay. So all together, I will get the answers. Let's see what happens. All right. Are you ready? everybody so our interaction cue is going to be if you're everything is fine then a thumbs up just on your screen so i can see you guys yes very nice yes uma yes dadu yes anita <laughs> yes ruchi great so yes namrata yes barkha so just a thumbs up if everything is going fine and in case you can't hear me or there's something not going fine it's a thumbs down 
okay or mm, kacha pakka not really happening okay so they're just just our communication gestures yes uma good to see you all right so are you ready for the word is everybody ready with their brains the first one which comes to your mind word association and then we are going to go into the first part of the meditation which is neuroscience why gratitude <laughs> so the first word which i'm coming up with and telling you ravindra is russia 1 2 3 Are you ready? Everybody typed it in. Russia. The word is Russia. R U S S I A. Rus Russia. 1 2 3 go. Push the enter button. Oops. <laughs> All right. War, powerful spy, Ukraine attack. Powerful country. beautiful cold tolstoy na uh ha -huh. war not good ukraine determined war sucks <laughs> leo tolstoy <laughs> fear ukraine war energy mm all right five new messages ukraine ukraine friend risk babushka dolls good friend cold attack ukraine All right. So, if we are to see a majority of the responses that have come in are war, attack, Ukraine. Mhm. Mm Sucks. <laughs> As Sanjay says. <laughs> so, I'm going to connect this with neuroscience. Wait and watch. How So yes there we go old russian adage a spoonful of tar can spoil a barrel of honey but a spoonful of honey does nothing for a battle of tar russia is known historically in many ways hmm? we know the country as having given us dostoevsky tarkovsky tolstoy hey, even computer pixels a country such as this has more or less i guess we all can say been primarily associated with war so we are going to use this to dive into twice one current of neuroscience we're going to take two dips into it before we move into gratitude we'll understand the why of gratitude scientifically so it has been proved the way we see with russia it has been proved in many studies that our brain has inherently a negativity bias you must have heard of the case of missing tiles that there is a wall which is full of tiles but just that one tile which is missing that is what catches us scientists attribute evolutionary reasons to it negativity is supposed to be more packed with it information danger threat responses preparedness to fight or to fly F flight so negativity evolutionarily has been linked with something very basic in us 
that somehow it's going to protect us and it's true also it's not that it doesn't but this negativity bias survival mechanism sometimes need to be creatively turned off because if it is on all the time when it is not needed then it can lead to cardiovascular diseases blood pressures heart attacks some say cancer <laughs> you name it so this stress mechanism this negativity orientation whenever something comes at us to look at the negative of it good important survival but we should have the switch to turn it on and to turn it off the problem is when we don't have the switch to turn it off and the question also arises do we have the switch to turn it off and can we really change the whole mechanism which is so deeply evolutionary to be more positive to be more creative to be more relaxed the answer again comes from neuroscience they say yes you can there is a word which is known as neuroplasticity scientists use that and say that it's possible to change the structure of the brain so a question arises what is the mind and what is the brain hmm let's a little simplistically because this is not a neuroscience class and we are not scientists so a little simplistically let's try and understand this mind is like the information buzz in the brain so very very simply you can imagine it like the software being the mind and the hardware being the brain the information that flows through the mind through these um neurons that you're seeing these nerve cells is the connections that happen in the mind these cells are always buzzing and sparking as i'm speaking to you and you're listening these cells are right now very very buzzy these are all sparking let's imagine how this happens because there is a pattern which each one of us has our neurons working in since who can say when as i not speak but spark with you as a neuron you spark with your friends this a uh, comfortable sparking i with you you with your friends your friends with their friends this zonal comfort sparking be it of a very creative group of friends or be it of say mafia <laughs> but comfortable sparking makes set roads in the brain set pathways in the brain like highways fixed pathways the question arises can these pathways in the brain be in the brain be changed scientists say yes and they give the response in that word which is neuroplasticity the word means the brain's ability to modify change adapt both the structure of the brain and the function depending upon the experiences you have so it is not just the brain which is determining the experience but the experience can change the brain you want to know how let me show you <laughs> what do you see here what you see here is a map of 
the convoluted streets of London. This is not a highway, but a very complex map. In a five-year study that the scientists, the neuroscientists have done in London, they have found that driving on the convoluted streets of London day in and day out increased a part of the brain of the taxi drivers. Mm -hmm. To be specific, the posterior part of uh, 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 an organ known as hippocampus, which is known for spatial memory and navigation skills. That grew larger in taxi drivers than in most of us general public. It also depended upon the time which was spent by the drivers driving. So are you trying to, I mean, can you get where I'm leading? Two things. When the mind is trained through a sustained practice, here we are just talking about taxi drivers in London. When the mind is trained through sustained practice, the brain changes. So that is revolutionary when it concerns sadhana because this is where the idea comes that any negativity bias that we have that can change through sustained practice and we are exploring that practice to be the practice of gratitude. If you feel low, if you feel sorry, if you feel angry, if you feel stressed out, if you feel your disposition is turning more and more towards looking at the negative in life rather than the positive in life, which by the way is natural, you have the capacity to train your mind and change the brain through simple practices but sustained practice no one experience can do this for you it has to be a sustained regular practice which will change this for you remember that If this has become too much of an information overload, this was just to make you intellectually oriented towards understanding, have the clarity of why the gratitude practice. And if you will allow me um, the play, <laughs> I do believe that seeing a negativity bias is why at some point in time, our rishis designed the gratitude practice for us. Panchmahayadna was there for every grahastha to be practiced every day so that the mind would not wander off in the usual negativity, usual feeling deprived in life, feeling like a victim, feeling lost all the time, feeling confused all the time, but would creatively redirect itself in acts of gratitude, of compassion, of sharing. So you wouldn't also feel alone. You would feel a part of an integrated whole, which is what life is. So the question arises now, why are we doing an embodied practice of the gratitude meditation or the Panch Mahayajna. I mean, why can't we do it in terms of just the outer yajna, which is putting the fire oblate, the offerings, the standard way in which it has always been done. That is beautiful absolutely beautiful 
no problems with that but in many of our lives i can speak for myself that's not really sustainable i can't do it every day i am a householder i'm a grahastha but i can't do it every day the urban life the modern life leads me in ways where that is not possible so keeping the essence of gratitude towards the five tatvas towards the five stages of gratitude we need something which in our modern life we can practice on a sustained manner because remember neuroscience only a sustained practice can change the <laughs> mental makeup to put it that way i need something which i can do at a sustained in a sustained manner okay so which is why we are looking at practices that are inner practices that we can do even with if you are taking a drive somewhere that we can do sitting on our chair in the office when there's nothing to be done which we can do just sitting somewhere by ourselves in front of the computer there's somebody who's not come up just close your eyes and do the meditation okay something which is simple doable and why the body we're going to be using the tool of the body the embodied tool which is the body to do it so the sutra for that comes from an ancient text the shiv samhita i would invite you all to take a moment and listen to this देहे अस्मिन् वर्तते मेरुः सप्त द्वीप समन्वितः सरितः सागराः शैलाः क्षेत्राणि क्षेत्रपालकाः ऋषियो मुनयः सर्वे नक्षत्राणि ग्रहास्थता पुण्य तीर्थानि पीठानि वर्तन्ते पीठ देवताः सृष्टि संहार कर्तारौ ब्रह्मन्तौ शशिः भास्करौ नभो वायुश्च वहिनिश्च जलं पृथ्वीः तथैव च त्रैलोक्ये यानि भूतानि तानि सर्वाणि देहतः मेरुं संवेष्टे सर्वत्र व्यवहारः प्रवर्तते जानाति यः सर्वमिदं सयोगी नात्र संशयः in this body the mount meru represented by the spine in this body the seven islands the chakras rivers mountains oceans rishis munis in this body gods and goddesses all the five elements space air fire water earth all beings in all worlds in this very body all that is through your body the panch maha yajna through this very body an offering
through your body the yajna acquires various meanings sacrifice offering prayer worship devotional act this we go through using a few tools meditative tools the first tool that we are going to use is going to be our breath so allow me a little play We've all heard when an offering is made to fire Agni Dev in a yajna then the word that goes with the offering is swaha Now just try and say that word swaha What do you notice swaha do you notice a sound of aha <laughs> ah. a full exhalation of the breath <sighs> yes exactly like we started please try that because this is going to be one of the tools for meditation and you will notice this is an inner laboratory this is an experimentation you are doing so try this this is not one way try it and you will know you breathe out the amount you breathe out naturally that much breath will come in the deeper you breathe out the deeper you will breathe in try it see open your mouth through the nose I need you to be really comfortable with your breath because this breath is going to be an anchor in the maps that we are going to navigate in our body this breath is going to be the anchor the rope in a way through which we are going to reach the various islands in our meru as shiva says so unless you are comfortable with your breath unless you say hello to your breath just a very simple hello very good yes try that feel comfortable ayush very good yes i'm seeing each one of you and i'm understanding so responding to where you are allow yourself in very good and take it in beautiful now i want you to just try putting your hand around the base of your spine take one of your hands remember this is embodiment of gratitude so take one of your hands and put this base of your spine maybe you can use your right hand put it at the base of your spine with your left hand just cup that area right in front the lowest part of your belly all right now see is your breath reaching there can you take your breath till there so there's a little movement at 
your lower belly and the sutra the key i'm giving you the key is the deeper you breathe in breathe out the more the breath will come in maha prana swaha the deeper the breath will go in till you try you will not know my friends this is all experimentation and only you can do it no one can do it for you very good now I'm going to get you to say hello to each of your chakras because we're going to be fo- following the map of the chakras to navigate through this. The breath is one tool and the second tool which you're going to get is the tool of the chakras. So, where your hand is right now at the base of your spine is your chakra which the rishis call the mooladhara chakra see your breath should be reaching there maybe you have never said hello to your mooladhar before mool aadhar the fundamental basis of all that you are all that your body is just make your breath reach there and simply say a hello to it remembering that these are energy chakras these are also exactly like the earth they are whirling they are chakras chakra means a spinning or a moving wheel so there is no specific targeted you are the chakra <laughs> no 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 it is a zone of circulating energy so round about and feel light about it because these are energy maps and pathways which are given to us and energy is always joyous so can't afford to be very serious about it just take it light and easy put your hand there and whisper a hello or a namaskar to it your greeting and bowing to the fundamental basis of your body your being as you exist right now the mool aadhar this is connected with the earth the prithvi and the sense of smell is what touches this chakra just move your hand up to the navel if you have a little bit of a f- fluffy belly <laughs> you can move your hand around the belly and say hello to it just around about the navel This is round about the area where you have your other chakra the second one swadhisthan connected with the element of water and with your sense of taste rasa Just move your hand up even further round about the area of the diaphragm just about under it move it round in a circle so you can feel the round that area this is manipura say a namaskar to it bow to it out of the seven islands this is the third island connected with the element of fire and of seeing then you have a little up right at the center of your chest you have anahata 
connected with the element of air vayu and the sense of touch around about the throat area you have vishuddha this is connected with space and with your ability to listen further up your forehead is atna connected with your ability to receive and give atna command at with very top is sahasrar the thousand petaled lotus the center of oneness of totality so this is round about the map that we will be using for the meditation the breath the chakras along with that visualization bhavana creative contemplation i will be showing you videos i will be guiding you my voice will be guiding you you just listen to what is being said and you watch what you are seeing and allow the words to have a creative effect on you contemplate creatively on gratitude we are connecting each of the panch maha yajna which is the dev yajna which is the gods pitra ancestors then bhut all creatures all created beings gratitude for them then gratitude for all manushya humans and finally gratitude for the knowledge of oneness brahm so we are connecting them with the map of the chakras so it is an embodied experience for you allow that to happen with creative visualization I'm going to invite you as we step into the first which is the Deva Yajna. To bring your entire consciousness to the area of your nose. your entire consciousness area of your nose the tip of your nose you can close your eyes because that will help you in the process for the deva yajna the offering of gratitude to the devatas all the elements in nature all the forces of nature agni vayu jal devata aakash prithvi bhu devi not just as outside the body but as a part of your body right now i need you to experience that bringing your entire awareness 
around the tip of your nose. Feel the space, akar, which exists in the nostrils. The Akash is not just outside somewhere, but as a part of your body every moment. Feel in this empty space of your nostrils, Vayudev. Wind air, breath, moving in and out. This Devata existing as a part of your body. To remain conscious, you can take a little sound out with a breath so you don't fall asleep now I invite you to sense the warmth of the breath as it is moving out a gift of Agni Dev the quality of heat the breath as it moves out is hot, as it moves in is cooler. Agni Dev inside your body warms up your breath. Now travel with your breath inside your nostril, back of your throat to your tongue. Rasana on your jiva. Feel The water, jala, the liquid quality. A force of nature, devata, residing in your body. You can close your mouth, swallow the saliva and as you do so, experience your teeth and your jaw. Prithvi, the element, the force, the divinity of the earth. All the five Pancha Mahabhut, gods and goddesses, forces of nature, in this very body called you, you, and you. I invite you to now please take your one hand and put it at the base of your stomach, the base of your spine, at the Mool Aadhaar, 
the fundamental island in the meru use your breath to reach this chakra deep the mool aadhar breathing deep into this all the five elements the devatas residing in this whirling swirling chakra represented in your body as energy offer them your gratitude through your breath invite you to softly open your eyes and take in the images of the panch mahabhut the five great elements as a part of the deva yajna imbibe these breathing out gratitude using the sound of ha and breathe in their blessings make a prayerful offering of gratitude to all the elements that reside in samsara and in your body both fire which gives warmth to this earth as it does to our body what would be we be without this warmth if this body becomes too cold it is not alive the balance of the elements consuming what is not needed and creating what is vayu the breath which sustains life not just mine or yours but life of our indigenous spaceship the mother earth by you akar which holds everything vayu agni jala prithvi everything is held in the embrace of akash pr 
prithvi for stability what would be life without the anchor which this earth gives us in this body our bones our teeth our nails and on this earth the very fact that it is prithvi breathe out your gratitude feel each of that element in your breath in your bones in the warmth in your hands in the water in your tongue in the blood which is gushing through your veins each of these devatas are residing in you as you are right now good bad not so good not so bad beautiful perfect thin fat gorgeous not so gorgeous doesn't matter they are residing in you right now blessing you with their presence as you are slowly moving to around about the region of your navel just move your hand up take your breath all the way to your navel see your stomach coming in and moving out breathing deep in and out grounding ourselves in swadhishthan and grounding ourselves to say thank you to our ancestors connected with the navel our umbilical cord to this entire existence pitra yajna an offering of gratitude the second fold of the five fold gratitude for our ancestors i invite you to close your eyes right now and look at your body There are some things in your body which are like your mother some like your father There are some like your grandmother or your grandfather or your uncle Some parts of your body you like Some parts of your body you don't like your body 
reflecting all your ancestors. My feet look like my nani. My calf muscles, hey, they're like my father's. <laughs> he was a footballer and, well, you know, he always had strong muscular calves. My hair are like my mother. Increasingly, I'm looking more and more like my uncle, my mama. Every part of the body coming from the ancestors known, the ancestors unknown. Mental patterns. I invite you to now step into the realm of the mental patterns. When I get angry, you know, I'm just like my father. He had a temper like this. He would always get angry. My God, how he would shout. My voice. Oh gosh, have you seen? My God, I'm becoming more and more like my mother, Yar. I don't know this this attachment kind of nature you know this is so much like my nani used to have huh? nana this just like her i keep on forgetting the keys you know even my mama does the same keeps on forgetting the keys mental patterns reflecting our ancestors in our body, in our mind. Some we like and some we don't like. Some that seem to be clear-cut gifts for us and some that are deep challenges for us. But whether it is a gift or whether it is a challenge, both are devices for us to grow, to become spiritually mature. Because that is how it is simply seeing the gifts and thanking your pitra, your ancestors for those gifts, but also seeing the challenges. the ability of the challenges to make us grow, to make us learn. Because without challenges, there is no growth, no learning. Breathe out your gratitude. Change that, the pattern of the mind, to feel the gratitude, not just in what you don't think is tough, but also what you think is tough. See the roses in the garbage, because they are there. Through that navel, breathe out. (sighs) 
allow the breath to move out in gratitude. Perhaps you'd like to think of one particular ancestor, one particular Pitra and send out your thank you to them. And usually the one who troubles you the most is who you need to be the most grateful towards. So find the points of friction and say thank you. Inviting you now to move your hand up and your breath up to the portion right at the center of your diaphragm. You can move your hand around there. Manipura, the third island and the third yajna, Bhut yajna, for all created beings, all creatures. Just find your friendliness with your breath to begin with. The deeper your bhavana, the easier it will be for you to connect with your breath. This is expression of gratitude for all the beings, all the creatures which exist in the world. To take as a support, you can use the images which you are seeing on your screen. The many insects, the many animals, cow. Now you may drink milk or you may be a vegan, doesn't matter. But the cow is deeply connected with you and your being, your body. The nourishment which she gives to the earth nourishes the food which you eat. And that satisfies the fire, the Agni in your belly. Yes, where your hand is right now. You are connected with food that is growing in the earth. Thanks to birds pollinating, you have honey that satisfies the fire inside. All the creatures that exist are deeply connected with you. The fishes which some of you may eat and some of you may be fed by in different ways. The algae which nourishes the earth.
breathing out your gratitude for this vast expanse the bulls which in many places do farming for you or nourish the soil so that you are fed all a part of the vast food chain mutual nourishment if you ever feel lonely think of the earthworms <laughs> the earthworms nourishing the soil the birds likewise feeding off the worms and the sweets which you have oh my oh my some delicious jalebis and what have you what do they nourish the ants the ants in turn a part of the large food chain connected with you in the bhuta yajna our ancestors would feed the ants flour as a form of gratitude to them we are offering right now to them our breath as a form of gratitude offer your gratitude breathe out this vast circle of interconnectedness not alone but together not lonely but as a part of a vast whole you the ants and all the creatures of this earth in a fine balance of life which makes living on this planet sustainable which makes living on this planet beautiful yes even creatures who look dangerous <laughs> part of the vast food chain one of them goes and the entire imbalance begins to show snakes tigers lions elephants sheep trees breathing into us all deeply connected bhut yajna offering in the fourth fold in the third fold a gratitude breathing out now slowly move your hand up to your heart dire dire to your heart where there is the anahata the center of consciousness the center of emotions the energy center connecting us to all human life the fourth fold to all people who support your life the way you live it right now the visuals that you will see now some of them will be unexpected but 
each of them you are invited to see without judgment because from the space of duality slowly we are starting to move towards the non dual everything that sustains life is both beautiful and sometimes not so beautiful and our life on earth also is supported by many people who are sometimes doing beautiful things but sometimes not so beautiful as we understand beauty our urban lives and the contribution that each person makes to our urban life each human being the farmers the people who do extraction mining without which life on earth the way we live it would be impossible right now people who have made dams people who have made the homes that we live in people who take out oil from the earth to make us go from one part of the world to the other they also need to be thanked for our life people who are doing dangerous mining extraction and mining without which my computer would be impossible and so would your device in which you are hearing and seeing me there are people who are doing that gratitude towards them gratitude towards the soldiers who are protecting us fighting for us gratitude to the people who are extracting coal without whom it would be impossible for me to screen this because there would be no electricity today gratitude even to the people who have cut trees nobody asked them to be unsustainable they have done their job to make chips for us extraction gratitude without judgment because this is our life your and mine today gratitude to people who are doing their jobs in this impersonal way making computer chips semiconductors for us gratitude to the truck drivers who are carrying equipment for us to the cargo ships I order something from some part of the world and it reaches me my urban life as i live it today gratitude to them the ones who carry who make sure i get what i get ships which are running on oil for myself for my life for this technology for us to be together gratitude to the fisher people for fishing for me gratitude to what i like and what i don't like 
gratitude for all that is because gratitude alone can set you free from raga and dvesha the duality gratitude to the many people who are picking up garbage from my home clearing my city my roads my streets gratitude to all that i like and all that i don't like because gratitude is beyond the mind beyond like and dislike so many people from farmers to milkmen to truck drivers to cargo ships to oil extraction engineers doctors soldiers they are all working as i sit here as you listen there to make our lives comfortable knowingly unknowingly they are all a part of me i am not alone and i send them my thank you i breathe it out stepping beyond duality beyond the dwet using this practice of धन्यवाद भाव थैंक यू टू स्टेप बियॉन्ड डुअलिटी डुअलिटी विच इज क्रिएटेड बाय द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑन अर्थ डुअलिटी दैट वी कैन सी इन our association with our ancestors duality that we can see in life in all creatures some creatures that we like some creatures that we don't like duality that we can see breathing out and accepting letting go with gratitude so we can step into the final the total an invitation to the brahma yajna invite you to now please take your hand to your throat just a gentle touch around your vishuddha chakra please take it there breathe out we are stepping into that zone of the non dual the brahma where all knowledge is one where all duality dissolves the oneness the knowledge which is spoken the knowledge which is experienced
Breathing out that oneness. Taking the hand up to that space between the two eyebrows to the Adnya Chakra. Very gently putting your hand there. Breathing out. Gratitude for that quality of oneness, the whole, the total, the Parabrahma. I invite you to gently rotate with very soft touch. Very soft touch. Consciously breathing out your prayers and breathing in the Ashish of the Rishis. Slide your hand to the top of your head, to the Sahasrar, as if you are blessing yourself. Breathe out through the top of your head. Gratitude. Ahobhav. Collectively for all that you like, all that you don't like. For all the forces of nature, Devatas, Devi, Pitra, Bhuta, creatures, Manushya, Gratitude, Ahobhava. And breathe in the blessings of the Brahma, all that is.
Relax your hand and relax your body and just listen.
संसार रंचे विधाता नयो हे जी सकल संसार रंचे विधाता नयो हे राम जन रंचे मैं बेनों को नातु बेहो हे राम जन रंचे मैं बेनों को नातु बेहो हे राम जन रंचे मैं बेनों को नातु to this world which is <laughs> full of friends of all kinds Sophie you can come over you can take the controls yes okay. yes I'm spotlighting you yeah are you yes you're a co-host you can do that um, yeah. we can't hear you very well akanksha oh my voice has become a little soft after the meditation <laughs> now you can hear me i'm sure <laughs> yes now we can yes. i think our entire being has become a little bit softer after that beautiful session i mean i i'm sure we're all feeling so calm and so nurture it's it's, it's very nurturing thank you so much for that and if you can see all of our participants they've been sending us such kind regards they've been sending us gratitude they've been sending us love thank you everyone for your beautiful kind loving vibrations and your gratitude and all your beautiful remarks and also thank you so much to akanksha for putting together this beautiful session i mean your voice in itself is so mesmerizing it can you know very easily put anyone into a trance and added to that your beautiful visuals it was just such a it was such a spectacular experience and really helped us move inward so thank you so so much for doing this it was just very very lovely and um, if anyone has any questions now is the time to ask please again see we keep getting messages everyone's feeling so much gratitude i think we're sending out so much positivity <laughs> for this session which is why we held it in the first place so thank you to all of our participants i and must I also add uh, that i would like to uh, thank hari 
for actually uh, coming up with this idea because this would not happen if Hari Vadlamani had not conceptualized this idea in the first place. So my ahobhav and my gratitude to dear, dear Hari if he is listening in. Thank you very much because without you this would be impossible possible. So it was his idea, he came up with it and then suggested to me which is why this has happened. So Panch Mahayadna as gratitude practice was Hari's idea which has been taken forward by me but he is the originator of it and I shall always be grateful to him for that. Thanks Hari if you are listening you. in. <laughs> He's there, he's there, he's listening okay. in. There he is. <laughs> So I'd like to introduce Hari Vadlamani to all you friends because Anna, as I call him, he is the one who's come up with this and I hope I was able to uh, carry forward some of what you had imagined, Hari. <laughs> I don't have any words to say, Chalama. Uh, I just deeply grateful to you for uh, doing this. Thank you. And seriously, um, all of you friends, uh, Hari has been such a great support in all of this. He has gone out of his way to make this possible at the level of idea, at the level of execution, at the level of making sure it reaches you people. So, you know, uh, I speak about creating platforms of celebratory energy and support. And if there's anyone in contemporary times in India who has done that, it's got to be our friend here, our dear, dear friend here, you see here, Hari Vadlamani. <laughs> Thank you, Hari. Thank you so much. And Thank I see you. a lot of our regular participants also who join us every week for Yoga Insights. And yeah. everyone new who's joined us. Um, and uh, in addition to being our friend and mentor, Hari is also the founder of the Indic Academy and all the verticals that fall under it, including Indica Yoga. So thank you so much, everyone, for this beautiful session. And yes, he, he does have very, very nice ideas. I can vouch for that as well. <laughs> So I think we just have one question uh, coming. Uh, no, there are more. There is a hand which has been raised. Yeah. I'll just take that. Krishna, I'll just come to you. Um, and those of you who, I'm, I'm sorry, it just took like about 20 minutes extra, but trust me, I was fast. Huh? <laughs> okay. Yes, Ruchi, yeah, you want to come in? Hands. That's Ruch that is Ruchi from Ethiopia. She has joined us. I'm really glad to have you here. Yo, uh, she, she needs to be unmuted. So I've just given you a request to unmute. Can you do that? Ruchi, can you unmute yourself? Yes, I'm unmuted oh. now. And I really don't know where to start from. This is really my first experience uh, with this group. And really thanks to Akanksha Aku, this was spectacular. The way you brought together science, science with spirituality. I think uh, this is, uh, I've attended many meditations, but this is really my first of its kind. And uh, it just made signing in all the way from Addis Ababa completely worth it. So I'm truly, truly grateful to you, the way you brought forward the visuals, the music, the mantra, everything was fantastic. Uh, you know, I've been doing yagyas ever since I was a child, but I never really knew the relevance and the meaning of swaha. And the way you have deconstructed it for me today is really quite something. But I also have a, a question, and I think you're probably quite familiar with this with a lot of people. I'm unable to visualize the five elements or the cosmos, the five elements of the cosmos being inside me. And, you know, and then also the asthirta that comes, you know, with the, uh, with the wavering. Yeah. And I don't know if you have some tips or suggestions on how to so channel. I'm right now engaged. I'm doing a five week um, weekend uh, program on the Panch Mahabhut. So we've already done two elements, which are like one hour meditation, actually two hours meditation on each of the, uh, uh, you know, elements. Um, because each one needs to be gone deep into. Uh, so I understand where you're coming from, which is why I designed this five-week uh, program, which I'm doing with some friends. 
but uh, ruchi what will certainly help in visualization is um just play around with the idea and see which of the element connects with the body where you know so for example space if you see your hand you're seeing the fingers and you're seeing the space here right space you can see inside your ear if you just shut your ear you can feel the sound of the space so play around be like a child be innocent with it play around and see how each of the element relates with your body when we are able to physically relate with something we can understand it better or for example because i know you really like all kinds of cuisines jalebi okay so how does space relate with jalebi so hang on it's not like there's the beauty about hinduism is that everything is divine so in the divinity jalebi is right there <laughs> which is great for me because i love sweets so in the jalebi where is the space two places one is between each of the curves and one is inside that there is space in which the liquid is flowing right so you play around with objects that you like maybe food maybe your own body and see where each of the elements are just do that as an exercise you know instead of thinking about crap when we go out somewhere if you see a um, a place where there is some kind of food being made or something open kitchen and then you just start seeing the elements there's fire there's wind there you know like right now you can sense the wind there is an air conditioner which is on so i can sense the wind from there so there are many ways in which we can sense all the elements in uh space Oh, I mean, in uh, in existence. So play around, and eventually, train the mind. It will come online. Simple mm -hmm. neuroscience. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and I hope to get uh, sign in for many more such sessions. So I, I've also started following Indica Yoga. But thank you so much. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruchi. Great to have you. Thank you. Yes, please. There is a question which was asked with by um, uh, Krishna Kumar. Any instructions on how to practice this every day? Certainly, use your breath as a medium, and put your hand on each of the chakras. The lower chakra is the five elements. The navel, where your navel is, is the ancestor worship, ancestor thanking. you go on to your tummy tummy is where the jatragni is that's also the manipura chakra okay that's where you connect with the bhut all the creatures which are created the food chain that you are an integral part of go to your heart you connect with the people around you and then finally these you just rest with a thank you so the practice which i can offer to you is a visualization practice which you can do and use your breath as an anchor to go to each of the chakras deep breathing now these are things if we had more time more days we could have gone deeply into each of the de you know how do you breathe till there because obviously there'll be questions about that but all these things will come with practice remember there is no tor to sustainable practice only sustainable practice that is why it's called sadhana or not just a one off experience <laughs> yes please sophie bina isra isranil bina would like to come in i unmute sophie yes yes okay. thank you so much i have a question ama ankanksha actually i don't know your name and i'm just saying what a connection cost me when my daughter was born i kept her name akanksha but people started saying ashanka because they couldn't pronounce properly yes, so i took her to meeda so anyway so now akanksha is here in front of me anyway so i have a question that uh, you know the which like mooladhara is the main base chakra right if it is balanced then all the chakras are balanced or we have to like how to bring the balance in all the chakras one second sorry um so i may not be able to answer that question because uh like i said this is not specifically a chakra group and i am using chakra as a anchor mm -hmm. 
to you know sort of give you like milestone markers for the body and for the panch mahayajna so mm-hmm. a chakra somebody who specializes in that who has a very very deep understanding of it will be able to tell you about that i can experientially tell you but that will not be where your question is going so okay. i i would suggest i think i saw in indica yoga there is something coming up on chakras okay um, Yeah, they they have some workshop which is coming up on chakras. Yes, so we I would share highly... that in our announcements, all yes. the details. So Bina, if you want But, to speak around, yeah. Yes. No, I would I just that. wanted to tell you the way you connected each and everything. I always feel like that that everything is correlated, whether it is an ant or it is an elephant or it is a mountain. Thank you so much. It was amazing. You're a mother, Bina. You'll always feel that. <laughs> Mothers have this thing about them to feel all connections. <laughs> Thank you, Thank so you Veena. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Sophie, you're there. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I think we're good with a uh, question. So we a lot of people were asking about the session. So yes, we will send you the uh, recorded session, and also all of our yoga inside sessions are recorded, so they're always available on our Indica Yoga website and the Indica Yoga YouTube channel, and you can access all of this from our website. um before we leave we just have a few announcements as akanksha just mentioned it's going to be so beautiful because this week she did this beautiful gratitude meditation using the chakras and next friday our yoga insight session is going to be hosted by swami taponidhi from the bihar school of yoga and he's going to be speaking specifically about how to balance your chakras through meditation so can we have a poster of that session please Okay this is yeah this is it. this is actually a retreat we're also having a retreat from the 15th to the 17th of July but before that next friday we have a yoga insight session both are going to be hosted by Sw- this is the one yoga darshan it's called the path transformation and evolution so if you enjoyed our kanksha session today use the opportunity to join us again next week as this is going to go a lot you know deeper like with all the beautiful visualizations today was like a beautiful prep for next week's yoga insights which is going to be another amazing session and then following this he's doing a residential retreat at the ritambara center in uh, which is just on the outskirts of bangalore can we have the chakra poster again please yes this is the one it's called chakra sadhana and this is an experiential retreat which will again be led by swami taponidhi saraswati and it's going to be from the 15th to the 17th of july details and registration everything that you need is on our website so please go there to register thank you so much and of course of the announcement that we've been making for the past two weeks is indica yoga is going to have our first foundation yoga retreat can we have that poster please this is going to be a 10 day course at again uh, the indica ritambara retreat from the 1st to the 10th of august for which you can register again on our website thank you so much uh, koti ji for the posters and for all of our upcoming events and courses including the chanting for teachers uh, it's a teacher training chanting course that will be hosted by shantala shreemaya details also for that can be found on our website uh before we leave i'm sure a lot of you would like to get in touch with akanksha so can we have uh, your email or your website would you like to share your contact details please yeah so you can just uh, one second you can just connect with me here okay i'm just adding that in so yep that's where you can connect with me it's damini josh j o s h dot i n in <laughs> so we can connect there i've also put it up on the chat yes for everyone Thank you so much. Um so that's it for today's yoga inside session everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again Akanksha for this very very mesmerizing beautiful experience. Thank you so much and I'll see all of you next week for our next yoga insights. Have a beautiful weekend. Hari Om. Hari Om. Thank you very much.